Finally, we have a major version bump from Anthropic, moving up to Claude 4 Sonnet, and we have the Opus model returning as well with Opus 4, boasting to be the world's best coding model. We also got Claude code in VS Code, and they didn't have to pay $3 billion to do it. I won't waste any more of your time, here's what you need to know about what was just announced. I'll start out on Claude here, as you can see on the left, I've selected Claude Opus 4, and on the right, Claude Sonnet 4. Now in the UI here, you can see we still have that extended thinking option if we want to turn that on. We have web search, drive search, and everything else. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is test Claude Opus 4 here in a Tetris game against Claude Sonic 4. If I hit enter on both of them, you can see on the right here with Sonic, that's actually going to get started talking to us quite quickly there, whereas Opus is taking a little more time. Sonic is already jumping straight into the code, which is super cool to see. And now so is Opus over here. While these are still coding away, one thing to note about the Claude UI is it actually got code execution. So you're able to give it files and it can run some Python code, for example, to do some analysis on the files that you give it, similar to how ChatGPT does already. There we go, one of them is actually done. Now, funnily enough, Opus actually finished before Sonnet here, but that was literally within seconds of each other, and they both took around a minute. If I go ahead and try use the keyboard here, it doesn't seem like it's... Oh no, there we go, it's registering that once I click in. And you can see that both of these are working, and they look pretty similar to each other. I would say that's a pretty good success, but my Tetris game isn't a benchmark, so let's go ahead and see the real benchmarks. Now, as I said, they're claiming that Opus 4 is the world's best coding model. So on SWE Bench, Opus 4 scores 72.5%, while Sonic 4 scores 72.7%. This is just slightly above Codex 1 and O3 from OpenAI. Now, as you might have noticed, that slightly contradicts when they say that Opus 4 is the world's best coding model, as Sonic 4 is beating it by a few percentage points. But I believe that's because on other benchmarks like Terminal Bench, Opus beats Sonic 4 by a significant amount. You can also see when they use parallel test time compute, they've achieved 80.2% with Sonic 4. Now, oddly, in a few other benchmarks like reasoning and visual reasoning, Sonic 4 seems to be slightly lower than 3.7 Sonic, but that is a very marginal amount. What is very impressive is the jump in high school math for both of the models. In terms of real-world usage, though, Anthropic has said that Cursor have actually tested Opus 4 and called it the state-of-the-art coding model and a leap forward in understanding complex code bases. The same goes for other customers like Replit, which report dramatic improvements. Opus 4 also dramatically outperforms all previous models on memory capabilities. When developers build applications that provide Claude with local file access, Opus 4 actually becomes skilled at creating and maintaining memory files to store key information. This unlocks better long-term task awareness, coherence, and performance on agent tasks. The demo they showed for this, which is super cool, is that Opus 4 playing Pokemon AI actually creates a little navigation guide for itself so it knows how to play the game better. In terms of Sonnet, the model balances performance and efficiency with enhanced steerability for greater control of implementations. This is something they mentioned they worked on, as many reported with 3.7 Sonnet that it was a bit over eager and was doing things you didn't necessarily ask it to do. They claim they have corrected that behavior. In fact, GitHub says that Claude Sonnet 4 soars in agentic scenarios, and it will be the base model for the GitHub Copilot agent going forward. For both models, they note that they worked on reducing the amount of shortcuts and loopholes that the models use to complete a task, with a 65% reduction in this behavior compared to Claude 3.7 Sonic. They're also introducing thinking summaries, which actually uses a smaller model to condense the thought process, but this only needs to kick in around 5% of the time, as most of the time the thought summary is small enough to display in full. Something really cool though is that these models tend to excel at working longer. Customers have reported that they could actually leave Claude on for hours without having to step in, so it can really dig into hard coding problems as an agent, and you don't have to constantly be watching it to see if it's going to ask you something or make a mistake, and you'll have to rerun the task. This seems like it's going to be absolutely perfect for integrating as an agent. What about the pricing though then? Well, this is going to remain consistent with our previous Opus and Sonic models. Opus 4 is going to be $15 for a million input tokens and $75 for a million output. Sonic is going to be $3 for a million input tokens and $15 for a million output, the same as 3.7 Sonic. To help with the cost though, they are actually releasing an option to set the prompt cache up from the usual five minutes to one hour. Now let's talk about Claude Code, as this is now actually generally available. But what's most interesting to me is they've actually integrated this with VS Code and JetBrains. To get this installed on VS Code, you don't actually go the normal route of installing it through the extensions. Instead, you make sure you've got the latest Claude code installed on your machine, open up VS Code, open up the integrated terminal, and then type in Claude. As you can see here down at the bottom, it says Claude code extension installed in VS Code. And if you want a quick start, we can do command escape to launch Claude code when we're inside of our IDE. So let's go ahead and try this out. What I have here is a simple Next.js to-do application, but it currently has an error. If I hit add task here, we see an error message. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, go into VS Code, do command escape. As you can see, Claude code launches up here. I'm gonna go ahead and type in what we need. I'm gonna say fix this bug and then simply paste in the error that we got. You can see it's actually pasted text in with one plus eight lines there. 
hit enter. Now we do see an error here. I wonder what that's about. Okay, that was just the error that I copied over. I thought that was a clawed code error. As you can see, it's going through the application. It's burning through some of my tokens, searching the files, and hopefully it fixes this issue. There you go. You can see it did open a file on the right there. Obviously, this is quite enlarged here. We zoom out a little. You can see it's showing us the diff view here between what it changed. All it did was change the select item value here from nothing to none there. And it says open changes in Visual Studio Code. Do you want to make this edit to do form? I'll say yes. Don't ask again for this session. So now we can see if this is actually going to fix that. Let me close this. We see it's burning through some more tokens. It's going ahead and fixing the code here, repairing a bit more of it. It says it's fixed. The bug was caused by select item having an empty string. If I go ahead and hit add task over here, there we go. It's actually opening up the dialogue and everything seems to be working. Let me go ahead and pick a date here, click create task, and we have no more errors. So claw code worked really fast there. As you see, it's integrated with VS Code so it can actually show you the diff view and it seems to work really nicely. They've essentially just integrated the Claude Code CLI into your IDE, so it was able to show you those diffuse, but everything else just feels like the normal Claude Code, which as I said, is now generally available. Now that was obviously quite a simple example, but they did actually showcase on stage that using this VS Code integration, they added a table feature to the Excalibur repo and Claude Code actually went uninterrupted for 90 minutes inside of VS Code, which is absolutely insane. Another thing to note as well, as seems to be the latest trend, you can actually tag Claude Code inside of GitHub PRs to get it to respond to review feedback, fix errors, and modify the code. We really are in the season of coding agents. They even said that they released a Claude Code SDK so you can integrate this into your applications. But I find this one a little bit odd as maybe it's just me, but it doesn't really seem like it's an SDK if all it's actually doing is just running Claude Code in a non-interactive mode. To build this into your own applications, you would still have to have your own code base call a command on some server. But while we're in the documentation, one final thing that I want to mention that I thought was really cool is you can now connect to remote MCP servers directly from the Claude API, so you no longer need an MCP client to do so. As you can see in this example, request here, we send over the MCP servers that we want to connect to, and then the API can handle that for us instead of us needing a client like Claude Code or something like that to connect to the MCP. Lots to go through there. Hopefully I call everything. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments down below. While you're there, subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.